Hello guys, welcome back to the Sadga podcast. We've got another exciting lineup for you this evening with three fantastic guests. We begin with our patron, Mr. Dale Hayes. Dale, how are you doing? I'm doing fine and it's uh, lovely to be here again. Lovely to lovely to have you. Basil, how, how are you doing this evening? Well, I'm very intimidated because Dale's here. You know, he's a legend and, and we just <laughs> mediocre players trying our best. But no, I'm doing well. Um, we wouldn't speak too much about the golf. Uh, if we're talking just about me, I'm fine. In fact, I have to take balls to feel sick. <laughs> no, we, we, we will get to the golf in a bit. But uh, finally, the, the final um, guest for the evening, uh, Jody Schultz. Jody, how, how are you doing this, this fine evening? No, I'm good. Um, as Basil says, I have to take pulls to feel bad. Um, other than that, yeah, I'm well. It also appears like you need um, original material as well going forward. So <laughs> we'll see if that maybe hey, shots fired. Shots comes, fired. To the, comes to the fore later in the in the episode. But um, Jody and Basil, I mean, uh, Jody, we can begin with you. I mean, how would you assess the the state of your of your game heading into the canon? Karting open at uh, Swartkops. I mean, are you are you feeling quite confident? Well, look, as I was saying, you know, yes, I am. Um, I played the the last provincial day and I played quite well. Um, I was able to stay out of my own head at the last provincial day, and if I can keep that up, then I think I'll be doing okay. And and, and Basil, yourself. I mean, I know you sort of were a bit. Uh, you kept your cards a bit close to your chest earlier, but. Um, are you are you playing much these days? Well, no. For the past three weeks, I was unfortunately away working, but I did play last week and this week. And, um, yeah, it seems to be the break might have helped a bit. Uh, not as much pain on the body, so it's feeling quite good. Sorry, you find that Basil, you... I'm a bit confused. I'm a bit confused. The last three weeks I was away, but I played last week and this week. You're the only, <laughs> person I know. Yeah. You're the only weekend golfer I know that plays five times a week. Uh, only on a weekend, yes. <laughs> so, no, it's one of those things. No, I don't know. I've done something, but the whole screen's gone cockeyed, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, yeah. Yeah, I don't know where, I don't know where Jody's disappeared to. Um, <laughs> hopefully, we'll, hopefully we'll get him back soon. Um, but, yeah, I bet, um, Dale, you touched on something very interesting. You, um, you know, it doesn't actually sound like you've taken a three-week break there, Basil, at all. Um, no, just just work related and uh, got back last week and uh, I was actually quite surprised. I, I even got a birdie. Can you believe that? Two oh, more. Nice. So that's, for me, that's, that's epic. Uh, first time in a long, long time. So it looks like something might just happen this time. Your <laughs> fingers crossed. But um, well, how? Dale, Dale, I mean, <laughs> what? <can> you say? <laughs> I'll do it for you, man. Cross my fingers. <laughs> Yo, that was completely lost on me for a second. Okay. But um, Dale, what is the what did you say is the sort of greatest challenge that um, you know the the disabled players are going to face at Twat Corps? I mean, where do you think the what do you think is is the course's greatest defense? Well, you know, there's lots of water at Twat Corps. The, the river runs through it, and, and unfortunately, the river is, you know, it used to be a, a, a beautiful river that ran through it. The, the quality of the water now is nowhere near what it should be. But uh, um, I think the, the water is is the biggest problem that people are going to have at Swatkop. You've got to keep the ball very straight. And if you, you know, if you do, if you do push your ball or pull your ball on certain holes, you're going to visit the uh, penalty areas. So... It, it really is a golf course that calls for accuracy. Swat Cups has never been a, a difficult golf course. It's a tricky golf course. You know, as Bobby Locke used to say, mm. you've got to use the 15th club. That's the one that keeps a hat on. <laughs> well, it certainly, it certainly wouldn't be an interview with Dale Hayes without at least one Bobby Locke reference. So glad we got that in, <laughs> in, the, first, um, in the first five minutes. But Basil, I mean, is, is Swat Cups a, a, a course that... that particularly suits your eye? I mean, what is, what's your sort of general track record there? I mean, is it a course that you play particularly well? Um, initially, I always battled with it because I uh, always a bit wide and, and all over the place. But uh, now you just got to know where you can hit to and not uh, park it in the water. The more you're in the water, the more shots you're going to lose. So I'm quite, I'm, I'm much more comfortable with SWAT course than I was 
two years ago, for example. And I'm actually enjoying the golf course now because, you know, to where to put the ball and where to make up shots. And, and, and Jody yourself, I mean, is it, is it a course yeah. you get to play much at all? Look, I do play, you know, and I, and I do tend to, we have a little bit of a love-hate relationship, myself and the course. I, I get these moments where I, I play well and I get these moments where it eats me up and spits me out. Um, but, you know, like Dale said, if you just keep it straight, you can actually, you can go around quite low. But it's course management. And for a for a stable fit player, you know, that's the, the chapter of the book that most stable fit players don't read is course management. Um, you get to a, a par four and you just, you want to hit the driver. You don't think, you know, there's other clubs in your bag that you can tee off with. Mm. So th that plays a pivotal role. Um, in, in keeping it keeping it low. Yeah, and I suppose I mean the key in in the Stableford division is just to kind of keep the score card sort of ticking over, so to speak, and just pretty much ensuring that you kind of score on every hole. So even if you do hit like an iron off the tee rather than a than a drive or yeah. or a three wood or five wood or whatever, um, then yeah, I mean that's that's the way to go. But um, Dale, I've 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 heard that. Um, the the course has undergone a couple of changes. Do you want to just sort of talk us through what what those are and, and how you feel it's enhanced the the course? Yeah, uh, most of the changes haven't affected the the actual play of the golf course. What we've had to do okay. because of the, uh, the the flooding that we we have a problem with of the river, we've had to uh, find ways of getting the water off the fairways. So we we've, we've created a few berms to try and get the wood off the fairways. It doesn't affect play at all. Um, mm. But we have changed the 12th green. We've made the 12th green bigger. Unfortunately, it won't be in play for the for the Sadka tournament. Um, it's not quite ready yet, but we, we've made that bigger. And then what we've done is we've filled in a couple of bunkers that always used to flood. So uh, we filled them in and turned them into mounds. And that has been, I, I, I hope uh, Basil agrees with me, but uh, at the first hole and the 10th hole, been a great improvement really has been a, a massive improvement um and and we've really been trying to the condition of the course hasn't been great uh, since we had the we had major floods uh, about what, eight months ago or something and uh we've really have worked hard to 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 try and you know get the course back in shape the course is looking lovely right now it really is uh, uh i think the guys will really enjoy it the greens are greens are nice for some people, the greens might be a little slower than some of the courses that they play. I mean, you know, for example, if you play at Royal Johannesburg, the, our greens are a bit slower than Royal Johannesburg. So uh, that might take them a bit of getting used to. So I would definitely recommend, uh, if you know, practice round, I definitely recommend spending a bit of time on the putting green. I think and, um, this, the, the changes are, are for the better. You can see where Dale and the team are working, and and you could go there any day, and there's a crew of guys cleaning up the mess, fixing up the trees, cutting back. Um, you just ask somebody, listen, that tree's in the wrong place, and the next time you look, it's cut back. So it it is really really improving because I only end up behind trees, so I've had to have all these trees removed. <laughs> but other than that, the course is good, yeah. And I mean. Yeah, um, guys, Dale obviously alluded to the the premium that um, will be placed on putting. I mean, Jody, would would you say that putting is um, a strength of your game, or is it more something you you need to to work on and and hone a bit more? Look, there's always room for improvement, but um, of of my golf, you know, putting has definitely not been one of the things that I've needed to work on. Um, I tend to get the feel for for greens quite quickly. And, and I can put seemingly well. Um, that being said, Dale's not going to make the greens that much harder. But yeah, um, all in all, my, my putting isn't, hasn't been bad. And, and, and Basil, I mean, obviously you that, no, that allegedly look, haven't really been playing that, that often, but <laughs> what's the state of your, of your short game at the moment? No, look, I'm a good four putter on any green, so I'm quite happy with it, but no. Um, <laughs> If you play on a green greens that are very quick, and then you play a swat corpse, you've got to really adjust uh, because if you try and lag mm. the putts, they always break off to the wrong side that you expect it to do. But um, 
you know, that's just, it's, it's the same for everybody. So I can't, I can only blame myself for not putting well. But uh, generally, um, you know, as, as uh, the great Bobby Locks always said, you putt for dough and die for show, you know. <laughs> you know, Craig. 100%. Craig, the other day, yeah, Basil yeah. came off the golf course and he'd four putted the last green. And somebody said, Basil, you four putted the last green. What happened? He said, what do you mean, what happened? I like putting. <laughs> It's nothing like touching. The more, the merrier. <laughs> anyway. That's actually quite a, quite a classic one, actually. But, um, you know, obviously guys like, um, I mean, Jody and, and, and Basil, I mean, we all know Dale's sense of humor is is the stuff of legend. And, you know, to be on the on the receipt, well, pretty much everyone that's been part of Sadgo over an extended period of time has been on the receiving end of, of one comment or another, or has um, actually seen uh, someone else sort of um, put to the sword a bit, so to speak. But are there any particular memories of Dale's humor that that, um, that sort of stand out to you, Basil? I mean, you seem to, to last, know Mr. Hayes quite well, well but... Over the last 50 odd years. Um, I think the last one they told me was the best. He's just happy to shoot his weight these days. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I'll never forget uh, in the last millennium when we were playing at Leokop, um, and I said to Dale, so when will you be joining the senior tour? And I think at that stage, Dale was about 46. And he gave me the exact years, the exact days, the exact hour to the exact minutes. And I just thought, <laughs> wow, you know, obviously it was a joke, but that's what we were all saying. Now we want Dale there on the, on the senior tour. Well, there's a few old things that we've been through together and and we've had fun. We've had good banter and you know what? That's not malicious most of the time. <laughs> but generally we have, <laughs> we, have Craig, a, we have a good relationship. Craig, I've got to tell you that you know you mentioned Bobby Locke. Yes. Yeah. Many, many years ago, probably twenty years ago, uh, there was a golf tournament called the Sports Stars. And uh um, it was the first time that I, that I got in touch with with uh, what is now Sadka, and uh, uh, they used to raise money and, and try and help. And, and uh, some of the money that was raised actually went in to build uh, Mandeville. I'm right, uh, Basil. Yep. And uh, at one golf day, we got a pair of Bobby Locks golf shoes. I know Bobby sure. Locks coming up a lot. And his uh, and his head. Pair, a horrible old pair of Bobby Locks golf shoes. Well, I sold it in the auction to Basil Mann, who then gave it back. And I sold it to him again the next year. <laughs> they are now up at Mandeville. He eventually, he didn't get to give them back to me because he didn't want to buy them again. So he put them into Mandeville. They're in a case at Mandeville now. <laughs> yeah. But the, I mean, a, a pair of those must actually fetch a fair bit these days, I'd imagine. Well, I mean, well, Basil should know. Yeah, but Basil probably cost should, me. But, uh, yeah, I, would, I would have thought today, if you put them on eBay, you probably would get some money for them. Yeah, you're quite right. Mm. And um, uh, yeah, uh, go for it, Basil. No, no, no. I remember good. once we bought them, um, I wanted to feel like Bobby Locke, so I only wore his hat and his shoes around the clubhouse. <laughs> I think if you did that today, you get kicked out. You know. <laughs> and it was amazing. It was amazing the couple of um, comments that we got then. And then, of course, the next year we bought it again and we did the same thing. But then, uh, by then, we had spent about 16,000 Rand on those shoes. And I, from what I can gather, uh, they were the last shoes that he wore when he won the British Open in 1950 something. And uh, they were a bit weird to wear. And uh, yeah, now they're in a the case at the Mandeville Hall. So we can go and visit them there anytime. I know you said um, that that he won his last Open in 1950-something, but I'm pretty sure if we give Dale half a chance, he could tell you the exact year and the exact score that he won with. Um, what are you talking? He'll tell you about the weather too. Did you say 1957, Andrews, and I'll tell you a lovely story about that. On the 18th Told hole, you. he had to mark his ball to get it out of the line of his fellow player. So he marked his ball by, by doing that with his fingers, his thumb and his little finger. 
And that's how far he marked it away. And when he put the ball back, he forgot to put it back. He forgot to move it back to the original place. So he put it from the wrong position. And nobody noticed. They had the oh, and- give him the trophy. And it was only the next day that it was noticed. And the RNA made a uh, made a ruling that he he would he was definitely still the champion because he'd won by three shots over Peter Thompson. And you know, they felt that uh, you know by by taking the trophy, even if it, if you know he had been penalized, you know, the maximum mm. penalty would have been two shots, so he still would have won the open. Yeah. And he carried the letter that he got from the RNA. Saying that you know they they looked at the incident and he'd won the thing. He carried it around in his wallet for the rest of his life. Sure. Jeez, that's extraordinary. I had absolutely no idea no, about that. Crazy. But it's also and interesting that that, 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 putt was it, like, that putt was something like sixty feet long or something that he had to patch it in. No, no, no. That On, was not far from the hole. It was quite oh, close okay. to the hole. But um, Jody, you, I, I think it's it's now your turn to to tell a a Dale or, or a story against Dale, I guess, if you if you have one, yeah. perhaps for us. No, look, fortunately, I've I've been like fortunate enough to fly under the radar unscathed <laughs> from Dale up until this point, um, and and also you know there's the, the the fondest memories I have of Dale is when he does an auction. He says, "I promise I won't look at you again. You can." Ha- I won't look at him. You can have it for X amount. And then choose God. He looks at the person and goes, okay, well, are you going to give me more? And I think, and every year I laugh at the same joke because, you know, it's just priceless. But like I say, fortunately, I've been unscathed by Dale up until this point. Um, cue the Joburg Open. I think I'm going to get my fair share. <laughs> but um, Dale, I mean, you must have seen some very uh, funny things over the years, I guess, having attended SA disabled opens in the past. I mean, does anything um, spring to mind of like a particularly funny incident that you that you saw play out on the course? You know, there have been a there have been a lot of uh, um, uh, funny funny things that have happened on the golf course. You know, some really were funny, but you had to actually be there. You know, sure. they weren't. You know, to sure. me, tell them they weren't actually. They, they, no, they, no, no, they, no, no, no. Nearly, nearly as funny, but yeah, I think one of the first ones, and I think Basil was there when Kali Knutsa did an auction, and uh, you know it was an yeah. absolute classic. But you know, it's, it's politically, you know, you'd get if you did what he and said what he did and said today, you'd probably get into trouble. But it, I mean, he, he was an absolute classic, and I'll, you know, Kali did a in early days did a huge amount for for disabled sport. He really did. I mean, mm. he. He was always available to play as a celebrity. He did auctions and all that kind of stuff. Um, the, the original ones took, you know, our golf days took place down in Natal at Dumslady Golf Club. Yeah. And uh, that event was started by Peter Makovich, David Suddens, and a guy called Alan Lazarus, who owned the Cattleman Restaurant. They started that event. And that eventually grew into, you know, uh, disabled golf. Um, I think that's safe to say. Do you agree, Basil? Yeah, it, it, yeah, it was the late 1990s, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, Eugene Eugene got involved and um, Lily got involved. And, I mean, it's, it's absolutely incredible what's happened with, with, disabled, with disabled golf. But I think the, the funniest thing that I remember was at Houghton Golf Club in one of those golf days. And there was a guy <laughs> there in a, in a, playing in a wheelchair. And, and he was paralyzed from the waist down. And he had the ability of kind of like, pumping up this wheelchair so that he could get up into a sort of a standing position. And so every shot that he hit, he had to sort of pump up this thing and get up into a standing position. Then he would just swing his arms and hit the shot. And it was in summertime at Houghton Golf Club and the rough, the continue rough was six inches long. And uh, we were interviewing him for, for, for super sport for the old pitcher putter show. And I said to him, you know, what is the hardest thing about playing on this golf course? He said, you know, I really, I just find it so difficult to get my club through the rough, through the grass. And, and I, just, I, I just had to start laughing. Here's a guy who on every single hole has to pump himself up. He wheeled his, 
his uh, um, the wheelchair for 18 holes around the golf course. And all he could find to say that was difficult about how was that the, the rough was a little bit too long. And, I, you know, that attitude, I just, Stay I, just I just had to laugh. You know, it, it was amazing. And, you know, when you meet, you meet the, some of the guys and, and you hear about what's happened, you know, to them and the accidents perhaps or whatever's happened. And, and, you, and you see the way they've handled their situation and the way they've accepted their situation and the attitude they have towards life and the future. It just, it just gives you so much, uh, you know, just, it just makes you, it, it really, it, it actually makes you just feel so inferior when you think back at some of the stuff that we moan about and some of the stuff that we bitch about, you know, as able, well, I, would you say I'm able-bodied, uh, Basil? Not anymore. <laughs> I'm fully, I'm fully body. Yeah, it is. You're a whole body. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm trying to say. It just, it really yeah. makes you, mm -hmm. actually sometimes makes you feel bad that you complain because you, you know, your ears hurting or you're, you've got a headache or something like that. Mm. And and then you, you know, you see that what what these guys um, have achieved. You know, both on and off the golf course, mostly off the golf course in their lives. And the attitudes that they have towards everything. Wow, it's unbelievable. Yeah, and I suppose, I mean, like, I, I, I can't really speak for everyone at, at the association, but I think also, like, um, it's what strikes me is that it, it probably, given given the adversity that they have overcome, it, it probably helps um, them to deal with sort of in round adversity. Like, you know, if you make a drop or a double or whatever, you probably. You probably shrug it off pretty pretty quickly and move on, and you know it doesn't really bother you. Whereas, if yeah, I suppose as you as you say, like if if you're an able-bodied player and you and you you know you've got everything going for you physically, and you do that, then yeah, it, it does probably tend to mm -hmm. tend to get to you. Sort of puts into yeah. perspective. I mean, if you miss a three-footer, it's hardly the end of the world. No, um, you. I find that the guys would get very hard on themselves even though they may mm. be armless or legless or whatever, their competitive spirit is just so harsh on themselves. Um, you know, some of them, you think they are suicidal the way they carry on, but uh, <laughs> you, you deal with what's gone wrong and, and you carry on. You know, nobody's got a worse story than the next guy. So they're all competing for the same glory at the mm. end of the day. Yeah, that's actually very, very well said, Basil. Yeah. I mean, forget disregard completely what I, what I said earlier because I think what what you said sums it up pretty pretty well. Um, but sort of shifting back to the the Canon Gauteng Open and the and the um, champion of champions event, Dale. I mean, do you do you foresee any particular holes that you think could be quite uh, pivotal in in deciding um, who, like the the outcome of of the events? Yes, I think, um, you know, I think the golf course now with uh, the new way we've set it up is is, uh, is a, a far easier start. So I think a lot of the guys will get off to a, to a, a more consistent and, and a better start on the golf course. You know, the, the, the old second hole, which is now the 11th, is a very, very tricky hole. So you don't only have to face that hole after you've played 10 holes. So you should be fairly warmed up by the time you get there. And... Uh, you know, that's where the, the, the water really starts to come in play. You play the 11th, 12th, 13th, uh, 16th, 17th, and 18th, all with water. So the water really comes into play over those last holes. And and I think then, you know, 11th is going to be very tricky. You know, you want to just walk off the 11th and know that you've made at least, at the worst, one point. Okay? Mm. Two points would be great. And then and then uh, 16 and 17, which is a par three and a difficult par four. I think they would be again if you walk off those two holes with four points. I think you'll be very happy. And I mean, in terms of seventeen, I mean, is that a hole that that sort of again places a premium on accuracy off the tee? Not so much off the tee. It's a fairly wide fairway, but the second shot you've got to go over water. There's water all the way from sort of fifty yards short of the green right up to the front of the green. Um, okay. It's the second shot really there that's uh, pivotal. 
But it's interesting, Dale, we've actually got a comment from um, Virgil Foster who who says that he actually still uses um, a putter that he <laughs> that he um, managed to to nab at, at one of your auctions. And um, Can, yeah, I mean, the, you do me a favor? please do me a favor, get a hold of Virgil and tell him. That's why the golf professionals at golf clubs are struggling with their businesses. He's keeping his clubs too long. He should be buying no, some new clubs. <laughs> Dale, he probably paid premium knowing he got it from an auction, so he's still like trying to get his money Jody, worth. Jody, I think our relationship's <laughs> coming to an end, eh? <laughs> <laughs> but you, you can't really argue with it too much, though, Jody. I mean, he's he's played in the final group in in both of the open series events that he's that he's played in so clearly something clearly something's working yeah no look clearly clearly the the, the premium that he paid at that dale's auction um <laughs> is paying off um you know i wouldn't change the flat stick for anything if, if i was virgil it would actually be interesting Basil, to see you if... stand up for me <laughs> yeah I, i'll tell you what that putter was actually one that uh was the last one and uh, it went at a very, very bargain price. But I think it was because Dale auctioned it that Virgil <laughs> uses it. He, he didn't have to pay a lot of money. I remember now. It was um, quite a while back. But the fact that he bought it from Dale, and Dale told him that putter has been trained by Dale himself. So it will always work. And there we exactly. go. So now he's using it, and there's no right. issues. I need a left-handed one of those, please. <laughs> you see, I've given, I've given it the magic. <laughs> That's what it was. But um, but Dale, you've also been known to to sort of traumatize some people and, and leave them in a bit of a state after after meeting you. I mean, I had a I had a fitting yesterday with a with a guy at um, Steenberg, a guy by the name of Rian Ru. I don't know if if that rings a <laughs> ring, does that no, ring no, a bell? No. Yeah, no, no, no. and Ooh. and he he was saying he was playing in an event in ninety two that you happened to be. I don't know if it was at SWAT Corps or, or, or where it was exactly, but um, you apparently saw him on the on the practice tee, and um, you you sort of strode up to him and said, um, "Are you trying to take the Mickey out of me? Are you trying to mock me?" So he said, uh, "No, Mister Hayes. Why would you say that?" And he said, "And and you said to him, no, because I've never seen a swing that's shorter than my own, um, which." Uh, Sort of for I think at the time he was quite young and I think he's sort of taken aback that this legend of South African golf thought he was um, thought he was mocking you, but um, I'm sure that didn't happen. I'm sure no, he he he, he said it pretty he pretty convincingly. Never ruin a good story by telling the truth. Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. But. Um, let me see where we are in terms of the the questions. Um, but Basil and 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 Jody, Jody, we can begin with you. What do you think you need to improve on to to fare a bit better in um, at SWAT Corps than than you did in um, in Durban? Um, look, as I said, you know, getting out of my own head as, as a stable fit player, um, just getting out of my own head is is key. And, and it'll help a great deal. Um, my biggest downfall is, you know, getting into my head, either the bad shot or a good shot. I mean, I recall we had the SA Open at Swat Corps, uh, what seems like 100 years ago. And one week before the SA Open, the old par 317, I hit the hole in one. And sure. now when I get to the par 317, I always want to hit the same shot. Um, and that's never going to happen, you know? So it, it, it's literally getting out of your own head. No, 100%. Couldn't, couldn't agree more. But um, Basil, I mean, uh, yeah. How, I how, uh, to minimize the three overs. So, you know, three overs hurts. Uh, ones and two overs you can manage, but when you start going to the three and fours and fives and six overs, it gets hurtful. Um, and it, it can happen just like that. You know, you hit a bad mm. shot, you think, oh, you football hit again and you hit a worse shot, you know, instead of just uh, standing back and playing mm. the shot properly. So I think it's just to stop the mistakes and, and, and do the stupid things that people that I tend to do. You know, that's all it really is. 
No, 100%. Well, you guys have been very, very gracious with your time. So I'll leave Dale with the with the last word um, here, as, as you know, as, as, as we should. Dale, if you had to, if you had to sum up um, Basil and Jody's respective golf games, how how would you how would you assess the state of their games? So I'll start with Basil, and then we can we can finish with, yeah, with Jody. Be nice, well, to me. But, be no, nice. I, think, I think at the moment Basil is over golfed. <laughs> <laughs> but, Just a three week break. You know, you know the, the the important thing, and I mean, you know, coming from what Basil's just said. You know, if you do hit your golf ball into trouble, the first thing you should do is get out of trouble. Okay? Don't try and get yeah. clever. Don't pl try and play a miracle shot. Don't play a shot that you've never tried before and, and you very seldom, you know, have succeeded in, in trying to play that shot successfully. Just get out of trouble, get the ball back into play and, and take your punishment. You know, that's that's the best uh, advice I can give in terms of that. And, and you know, on a golf course... Again, like Swatkop, where uh, obviously you can't play out of the the uh, penalty areas, but if you're in the trees, get out of the trees, get back on the fairway, and now you've got another shot to the green. So 100%. That, that should have sorted out all Basil's problems. Jody now, Jody, I'm not so sure. You know, a lot will depend with Jody on when he had his last shower. Because Yo. if it was the hair might be in his eyes, you know, if it falls down. <laughs> but quite, okay. quite said, you know, both of them know Swatkov well, and it really is who plays well on the day. Yeah. You know, golf is such an unpredictable game. You just, you know, it's as Harold Henning once said, it's like eating in the dark. You never know what you've got until it's actually in your mouth. <laughs> you know, you, you never know what's going to happen in golf. And, you know, as. As some people say, I mean, it's the best game in the world to be bad at. <laughs> but True. if they had to teach sex the way they teach golf, the human race would have died out years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> well, um, I think I think on that yeah. note, um, we'll, oh, we'll call it a night. Um, but guys, thank you, thank you so so much for your time. It was. Um, yeah, it was great fun as always, and yeah, looking forward to to two great events at Trot Corps in the next um, couple of weeks. Yep. Thanks looking so much for your time. Nice. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks, cool. Thanks, cheers. Bye. Ciao, ciao.